In AKS Azure Kubernetes Service, we can choose any ingress controller to expose services either through the internet, through a public endpoint, or through a private endpoint for the internal network. So we can choose open source ingress controllers like Nginx ingress controller, but we can also leverage an ingress controller that is implemented through the Azure Application Gateway through the AGIC, Azure Application Gateway ingress controller. Let's see how this works and how we can enable AGIC extension into an AKS cluster to expose our services for the end users. Let's learn in this demonstration how to use Azure Application Gateway as an ingress controller within an AKS cluster. We can enable this integration between Azure Application Gateway and AKS using the AGIC component, Azure Gateway Ingress Controller. AGIC will be installed as a pod within the Kubernetes cluster, and then it will go to listen for the ingress resources that will be added and configured within the AKS cluster, and then it will go to apply that configuration to the Azure Application Gateway. And then the Azure Application Gateway will be able to get the traffic and then route that traffic directly to the requested pods. And because Azure Application Gateway will be injected into a virtual network that could be the same VNet of the cluster or a period VNet with the AKS, so it will be able Able to reach directly those pods on their private IP addresses because both they will be uh, they can talk on the same network. So let's see how this uh, works on a demo. So all the source code that I'll be using today, all the scripts are available on this GitHub repository. You can go to check it out. And for this demo, I have prepared an AKS cluster, and then onto this cluster, I want to enable application gateway. So there is, there are multiple options to enable Azure application gateway. So you can bring your own application gateway, you create it yourself, you configure it, and then you can go to here, and then you import it from the Azure portal. So here I'm using the Azure portal for simplicity, but of course you can also use the command line or use the Terraform templates, ARM templates, BICEP, in order to configure your application uh, gateway with AKS. So here all we, think, all we need to do for this simple demo is that we'll go here to enable application gateway. So for here, I don't have an existing one, so I can go to create a new application gateway. And look here, when I want to create a new one, so it will ask me just for the name and the subnet prefix. So within the AKS VNet, it will go to create a new subnet with this CIDR range, okay? However, we have multiple other options. Actually, if I go back to the official website for AGIC component right here, we can see multiple uh, options actually are uh, supported for uh, bring your own uh, application gateway or for using the Brownfield install. So with this, you can actually install your application gateway into another virtual network and then pro establish peering between the two networks with the AKS uh, uh, VNet, and then you can, uh, Azure Application Gateway can route the traffic to that uh, to the pods from AKS. So I'll continue with this simple install. I'll specify here that uh, I'll, I'll accept that subnet side range, and of course this uh, subnet prefix should not overlap with the subnets within my, the VNet of the cluster. So I'll be okay with that, I'll choose that, and then next I'll go to Accept that, then I hit apply. And now actually behind the scenes, it's Azure <clears throat> will go to uh, deploy a new application gateway and then it will link that application gateway to my AKS cluster. So in this case here, that application gateway will be owned by this AKS cluster. I cannot reuse that application gateway with Azure AKS clusters or with other uh, Azure resources like virtual machines and so on. It will be uh, dedicated only for this AKS cluster. That's because I have used the Azure portal from here. And of course, we can. there are other scenarios where you can share the Azure application gateway between multiple Azure resources. Great, so it will take a few minutes for creating this application gateway and link it to the AKS. I have already another cluster where the application gateway were uh, set up before starting this demo. So you see here, um, I have this gateway resource and they have a link that will guide me to that uh, gateway. So if I go to the 
node resource group for my cluster, I will see here some of the resources that will be created. Actually, we can view that here we would have mainly three new resources. So we would have the, the application gateway itself and then the application gateway because it will be used as an ingress controller. It will expose the services on the internet. So it will have its own public IP address. In addition to that, an application gateway will have also its own managed identity, call it ingress, uh, ingress application gateway, then the name of the cluster. Let's take a look at that managed identity and let's see the role assignments that were assigned there. So it does have the contributor role over the node uh, resource group for the cluster because it will need to manage the virtual uh, network of my uh, cluster. Let's go back and go to the application gateway itself. So from here we can view the different uh, parameters, the front end uh, public IP address that were associated to this application gateway. Note that an application gateway can have, in addition to that public IP, it can have also a private IP address in case uh, if I want to expose the services on a private network, for example. And if we go to the configuration, we can see that by default, this created instance does not use WAF. Okay, WAF, that is Web Application Firewall, a very uh, useful uh, tool or very useful feature for the application gateway. It's actually, it might be one of uh, the top features, uh, one of the top reasons for which customers use the application gateway. It's this WAF feature. Okay, so you can go to enable it if you want to, but for uh, this demo, I'll continue without the WAF. And then you have the other uh, configuration and settings for an application gateway that we'll explore in a second for the backend pools and the uh, backend settings. Great, so now I have my cluster, I have application gateway installed, and they have that component Agic already installed. Let's take a look here at the namespaces get um, the namespaces of the cluster. So if I go here to the cube system namespace, or let's try get pods dash capital A to get all the pods in the cluster. And here we can see that inside cube system, we have a pod called ingress app gateway deployment. It's only one pod running inside this cluster. And as I said, this is the pod that will act as the Agic component. It's the pod that will listen for the ingress resources and it will go to apply the configuration into the application gateway. And because it does have the uh, managed identity that have the contributor role over the resource group where that application gateway lives, so it can authenticate to the app gateway and apply that uh, configuration. Not it have uh, the air, not that uh, did have the airbag role as the contributor on the app gateway. So let's go now try to deploy or create an ingress resource within this cluster. So for that, I have prepared a simple YAML file where we'll go here to deploy or create a deployment that will deploy the ASP.NET sample image from Microsoft MCR. This is a sample ASP.NET, okay, so it will create three instances and then to expose it through an ingress, we need to create a service for that. So we create the service that will point to that deployment. And then next, the important part here is the ingress resource. So with the ingress, I'll go give it a name and then I'll specify the ingress class name. And note here, uh, in some documentation, you will find the old way for defining the ingress class name, which is using the annotations. This actually will be deprecated if it's already, it ha if it's not been already done, okay? It will be deprecated somewhere in the future. So you should use this new um, annotation or this new way for declaring the ingress class name. So for my case here, it's the Azure application gateway. That's the name of the ingress class. Why uh, it's that name? Actually, if you go to the command line and then get, uh, get uh, ingress class, you will see here the ingress class that were created by the Azure Application Gateway, which is called Azure Application Gateway simply, okay? So I specify that ingress class, and then on the path, I'll go to expose my application on the root path right there, and I'll expose it on port 80. I'm okay with that, so let's go to deploy this sample application. I'll do cube control apply dash F, then the name of the ingress uh, resource. 
let's make first we are inside the, the right directory and then we can go to deploy the ingress file so we can see the deployment created ASP.NET app uh, service created the ingress created so let's check those resources cube control get pods and then get uh, get the pods the services and the ingress and yes here we can view the resources that were created my three pods are running and i can view also the service that will serve those pods and the ip address that is exposed to, to the internet and that is actually the same ip address for the azure application gateway public ip which is dot .123 let's go back to the azure portal and let's verify that so if i go back here to overview you can view yes it's the same public ip address that were created right here which is dot .123 great let's go now to that uh, um, And here we can see our application running on this public IP address of the public uh, application gateway. Great. So behind the scenes, what happened is that that Ajik pod did uh, listen for the configuration of the ingress and then it did apply the uh, configuration to the Azure application gateway. So here, if I go to check the logs of that uh, ingress app gateway pod, from the cube namespace, we can view here. Actually, we can see lots of uh, 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 JSON file that will go to configure the Azure application gateway. So all of these actually it will go to add the backend address pool and the backend HTTP listeners and so on. And here, if I go to the Azure portal and take a look at uh, what was changed from the Azure application gateway, I can go here to the backend pools and then I can see actually there are two backend pools, the one created by default and a second one created for my application. Note here it has the name of the ingress which is ASP.NET app. So if I go to here, we can view that this one, uh, this backend pool have three backend targets. All those three, they will have actually three private IP addresses. Um, but which IP addresses is this? Actually here, if I go back to to the command line and then if I do cube control get pods dash o wide in order to show the IP addresses of the uh, three deployed pods we can view those three pods are actually the same pods for uh, that are used as the backend pool let me make it a little bit smaller and yes we can see those three uh, IP addresses 10.224.60.12 and dot 8078. Great. So it's this way Azure Application Gateway will be able to route the traffic directly to the uh, pods. In addition to the backend pod, we have also the backend settings where a new backend setting were uh, created for that uh, ingress resource. And note here, there are lots of uh, options either using HTTP or HTTPS, uh, configuring the uh, certificate when using HTTPS, and then we can provide the TLS certificate from, uh, from here, or we can link it through another uh, key vault and so on. And we have lots of other uh, configurations right here. If I go back to HTTP, we can view uh, some other information like use custom probes and the custom probe that should be used for this one. And next, if I go to SSL uh, settings, it's from here also that we can uh, configure the SSL uh, pro uh, profiles. And from listeners, we can view here, if I open this one, that's my listener, which is the public IP address for the application gateway. Azure Application Gateway provides also another good feature that is the backend health. So you can see here our three pods, it will check permanently the, the health of these three uh, pods. And note here, it's telling me it, those three pods are healthy. Thank you.